Hello, all you freedom-loving people. Welcome to another episode of Front Page. I'm your host, Scott Cameron Goulet. Let's begin by taking an interest in the situation in the Middle East. Why is it that Lebanon is not bothered by the Israeli invasion, but rather it's Iran that's upset? Next, We'll look at last night's vice presidential debate. Normally, vice presidential debates don't get much attention, but this year is an exception. Another key aide to New York Mayor Eric Adams has resigned, but the aide's departure may not be a bad thing for Adams. Okay, let's get into it. Let's take a look at the situation in the Middle East, which has the world's attention. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu announced on Tuesday that a massive Iranian ballistic missile attack on Israel was thwarted thanks to the country's most advanced air defense system in the world as well as U.S. support. He emphasized that Iran had made a big mistake and would pay for it. Israeli officials have revealed that the Israeli army will launch a major retaliatory operation in the coming days, possibly targeting strategic locations such as oil production facilities, targeted assassinations of key figures, and air defense systems in Iran. Israeli officials noted that one of the reasons Netanyahu decided to respond militarily to the Iranian attack at a security cabinet meeting in Jerusalem without specifying the modalities of retaliation was because the Israeli side wanted to consult with the U.S. government. At the time of the missile attack, Netanyahu was on the phone with British Prime Minister Keir Starmer. Keir Starmer condemned the Iranian attack in the strongest possible terms. He expressed Britain's firm commitment to Israel's security and protection of civilians. It may come as a surprise that Israel has struck at Hezbollah bases in Lebanon, even sending ground forces into Lebanese territory to launch a limited offensive. However, the Lebanese government forces turned a blind eye to Israel's cross-border strikes, and it was Iran that struck back. The reason for this is that the Hezbollah armed organization is a state within a state in Lebanon, and the government of Lebanon has considered Hezbollah its enemy since its inception. Lebanon used to be a Christian country before Hezbollah was established, but as Hezbollah's power grew, Lebanon was gradually transformed into an Islamic country. But there are various factions in the country, which is quite confusing. Hezbollah, by contrast, is a predominantly land-based force, but its total number of fighters could be as high as 100,000. If Hezbollah were interested, it might be able to take on the Lebanese army. And if Hezbollah were so inclined, it could probably just bulldoze the Lebanese government. Thus, although the Lebanese government has long resented Hezbollah, it has been unable to eliminate it. Thus, the only thing that the Lebanese government can do in the face of Hezbollah's growing power and the Israeli invasion is do nothing in order to survive the volatile situation in the Middle East. The Lebanese government may even intend to take advantage of Israel's hand to eliminate the forces of Hezbollah, which have been a nuisance to Lebanon for so many years. On Tuesday night, Democratic vice presidential candidate Tim Walls debated his Republican opponent, J.D. Vance. This will be the only face-to-face -face meeting between vice presidential candidates in the 2024 election. Normally, vice presidential debates don't have much of an impact on the polls, yet Vance and Walls' Tuesday night showdown generated a great deal of interest since no further presidential debates were scheduled. For voters who had not yet decided on their voting intentions, the vice presidential debates provided an opportunity for voters to learn about the policies of their respective competing teams. In the last debate between President Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris, the audience felt that they did not elaborate on their policies. And these two men were not well known before they became vice presidential candidates. Tuesday night showdown was also a chance for them to show themselves to voters. Vance's goal was not to be the most likable person. He was okay to argue that Trump is the best positioned person to be a change agent who can improve the economy and solve the illegal immigration problem. In that sense, Vance's mission was well accomplished. The first issue in the vice presidential debate was about the current situation in the Middle East. Wall said that the U.S. needs to maintain a military presence in the Middle East, and he said that he supports continuing to stand with Israel against Iranian-backed proxies. 
Vance said that President Trump had actually brought stability to the world. For example, the Abraham Accords. The Abraham Accords are a series of treaties that normalize diplomatic relations between Israel, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Sudan, and Morocco. And these were facilitated by the Trump administration between August and December of 2020. The two VP candidates then opened up a heated discussion on the issue of illegal immigration in the United States. Vance stated that the Biden administration's border policy has led to a surge in illegal immigration. This was a difficult question for Walls. After all, the illegal immigration problem has gotten worse in the three and a half years that Kamala Harris has been vice president and in charge of border issues. And both sides also publicized their respective economic policies. During the debate, Vance mentioned that people don't have to listen to so-called experts. All it takes to change the current situation in America is common sense. Governor, you say trust the experts. But those same experts for 40 years said that if we shipped our manufacturing base off to China, we'd get cheaper goods. They lied about that. They said if we cheap shipped our industrial base off to other countries, to Mexico and elsewhere, it would make the middle class stronger. They were wrong about that. They were wrong about the idea that if we made America less self-reliant, less so productive in our own nation that it would somehow make us better off and they were wrong about it and for the first time in a generation donald trump had the wisdom and the courage to say to that bipartisan consensus we're not doing it anymore we're bringing american manufacturing back we're unleashing american energy we're going to make more of our own stuff and this isn't just an economic issue I and mean, i've got three beautiful little kids at home seven four and two and I, I love them very much and i hope they're in bed right now but look so many of the drugs the pharmaceuticals that we put in the bodies of our children are manufactured by nations that hate us. This has to stop. And we're not going to stop it by listening to experts. We're going to stop it by listening to common sense wisdom, which is what Donald Trump governed on. Indeed. In fact, there are many things that if you put aside partisan interests, all of us know how they should be handled. The key is for someone to have the courage to stand up to the pressure and to follow common sense. In the second half of the debate, they began by talking about gun rights. In the face of increasingly frequent school violence, Vance emphasized the need for the state to increase safety in schools rather than urging more gun restrictions. Walls, on the other hand, surprisingly added corroboration to Vance's claims. And this idea that we should just live with it, and, I, and I, here's what I do think, that this is a good start to the conversation. I 100% believe that Senator Vance hates it when these kids, it, it, it's abhorrent and it breaks your heart. I, I agree with that. But it's, that's not far enough when we know there are things that work. I've spent time in Finland and seen some Finnish schools. They don't have this happen, even though they have a high gun ownership rate in the country. There are reasonable things that we can do to make it. When the vice presidential debate was coming to a close, Vance was asked if he would accept the results if the election was lost and if he thinks President Trump lost the 2020 election. He said that he is focused on the future and he's not dwelling on what happened in the past for now. First of all, I think that we're focused on the future. We need to figure out how to solve the inflation crisis caused by Kamala Harris's policies, make housing affordable, make groceries affordable, and that's what we're focused on. But I want to answer your question because you did ask it. Look, what President Trump has said is that there were problems in 2020, and my own belief is that we should fight about those issues, debate those issues peacefully in the public square, and that's all I've said, and that's all that Donald Trump has said. Remember, he said that on January the 6th, the protesters ought to protest peacefully. And on January the 20th, what happened? Joe Biden became the president, Donald Trump left the White House, and now, of course, unfortunately, we have all of the negative policies that have come from the Harris-Biden administration. Also, Donald Trump Jr. was on CNN after the debate. He said, Vance's debate win was a master class and that Vance handled himself extremely well, even on issues that Republicans have struggled on. After the vice presidential debate, many media outlets describe Vance and Walls as demonstrating Midwestern friendliness and appealing to moderate voters. During the debate, both sides were mostly cordial in tone and they did not make personal attacks. Even when there were heated arguments, they were directed at the policies or views of the other side. After the debate, they also hugged each other, shook hands, and patted each other on the back, showing the style of a gentleman's fight. 
Another top aide to New York Mayor Eric Adams has resigned. Senior advisor Timothy Pearson submitted his resignation on Monday night. He will leave his current position on Friday. A close friend and right-hand man of Adams, Pearson had worked with Adams in the New York Police Department. He oversaw contracts and security for immigrant shelters in city government while maintaining significant influence over the police department. According to Pearson's attorney, Hugh Moe, Pearson made the decision to resign after FBI agents searched his Long Island home a few weeks ago and seized cell phones, documents, and cash. In his resignation letter, Pearson didn't mention any of his current legal troubles. Instead, he said that he was proud of the performance of Adams' governing team. Pearson is the fifth person in the New York City's top echelon to voluntarily ask to go in the last month and he is viewed by outsiders as one of Adams' closest core staffers. But Pearson is different from several other top officials who have resigned. Pearson had previously been a political liability for Adams because of several controversies. Although Pearson was technically employed by the city's quasi-governmental economic development corporation, he actually worked for City Hall. His position with the Economic Development Corporation allowed him to continue to receive his NYPD pension while still receiving his $243,000 annual City Hall salary. He served as both a consultant to the mayor and as an executive of a casino seeking a state contract until it was revealed by the media that the arrangement was terminated. In addition, he was involved in an immigrant shelter brawl and faces multiple sexual harassment charges, and yet Adams has been defending Pearson as a good friend. But that support has created divisions within City Hall. City Hall's chief counsel, Lisa Zornberg, reportedly resigned after Adams refused to fire Pearson. Mayor Adams denied the notion that he finally bowed to the advice of his top advisors by requesting Pearson to step down. Adams said that Pearson is leaving the administration to focus on other aspects of his life and deal with those items that he had to deal with. Adams also said he made the determination that it was time to go on with that and I respect that. However, CNN reported on Monday that Governor Kathy Hochul urged Adams in a private phone call to oust Pearson and other top City Hall staffers who are currently under federal scrutiny. But Hochul did not call for the mayor's own resignation. Hochul said that she wasn't ready to give up her support for Mayor Adams and that she wanted to give Adams the opportunity to rebuild public confidence. Healthcare giant CVS Health said on Tuesday that it will lay off about 2,900 workers nationwide. That number sounds like a lot, but in the case of this large company, it represents less than 1% of its workforce. CVS Health said that the layoffs primarily affect corporate positions, not frontline jobs in stores, pharmacies, and distribution centers. CVS is exploring various options, including the possibility of splitting the company and separating the pharmacy chain from its insurance arm while the company looks to turn around its current situation. CVS disclosed a multi-year plan in August that aims to save $2 billion in costs by streamlining operations and using automation in its business, among other measures. CVS spokesperson Mike DeAngelis said that the layoffs are part of the company's $2 billion cost-saving plan. The company has cut about 5,000 jobs in the last year. And that's a wrap for this episode. Thank you so much for your support of Front Page. Please remember that every like, comment, and share helps more people to see the truth. If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have already subscribed, we thank you. But please double check to make sure that you're still subscribed because some of our audience have reported that they're somehow unsubscribed without their knowledge. We've also heard that many of you don't get notifications of our videos anymore on YouTube. So when you do subscribe on YouTube, please make sure to tap the notification bell as well. Okay, this is our show for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please don't forget to like this video and share it with your friends and family because everybody deserves to know the truth.